you believe in the power of prayer this morning? Do you believe in the power of prayer? So many times we say, of course, of course I do. Yeah, I believe there's power of prayer. But what do our actions say about our belief? Do we act like we believe in prayer? You probably heard this story before because I know I told it somewhere along the line. There was a town in Oklahoma, had two churches and a distillery. <laughs> Members of both churches, they, they complained about the distillery, how it was putting a bad image on their community and how they had to get rid of it. They tried in every way to get rid of this, this distillery and couldn't. Not only was it a distillery, but the owner was an avowed atheist, did not believe in God, didn't want to talk to these church people. It was, it was a mess. Well, the churches, both churches decided to get together and, uh, and join in a prayer meeting to get rid of the distillery. So they joined in prayer one night, closed the door, lights went down, and they began to pray. They hadn't been praying very long when a storm started brewing. They could hear the thunder far off and it got closer and it drew closer and it began, it began to, the wind began to whip around and, and pretty soon there was lightning all around and sure enough lightning hit the brewery and burnt it to the ground. Yeah, yeah. The next Sunday both pastors were preaching the power of prayer. God moved on our behalf. Praise God. About a week later, the insurance adjusters notified the distillery that they weren't going to pay the damages on the fire because it was an act of God. <laughs> <laughs> an act of God wasn't covered in the policy. So he decided to sue the churches. <laughs> claiming that they conspired with God. To destroy his business, but both churches denied that they had anything to do with burning down the, the distillery. The judge opened the court proceedings with these words. He said, I find one thing in this suit most perplexing. We've got a situation here where the plaintiff, who is an atheist, is professing his belief in the power of prayer. <laughs> While the defendants, all faithful church members are denying the power of their love. <laughs> Do our actions reflect our belief in the power of prayer? You know, you may be, you may be here this morning packing a burden. Many of us are. And we know that, we understand that. Um, I might ask how, how heavy is that pack that you're bearing this morning? I want to reassure you today, in the name of Jesus Christ, I want to reassure you today that there is no burden, there is no load that cannot be lifted by the power of prayer in the kingdom of God and in our relationship with Him, no matter what it is. It doesn't matter what it is. But Jesus told us, don't worry. He said, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow's got its own stuff going on. Don't worry about tomorrow, about its things. Sufficient for today is its own trouble. Sufficient. And so I wonder about the burdens that we're carrying. Are we carrying yesterday's burdens as well? Maybe we're packing burdens from three weeks ago, four weeks, two years ago. How much stuff are we packing that we ought not be packing if our actions matched our belief in prayer? There's a quote that I read it's from a baseball player, I do not know his name, but he said, don't worry about the things that are under your control. Because they're under your control. 
And don't worry about the things that, not, that aren't under your control because they're not under your control. Don't worry. Period. It just doesn't pay to worry. Burdens up. I read an article on the camel trains of the Middle East. And I noticed a couple of things in there that I want to share with you this morning. The article said that each morning the camels line up. They would be brought up one by one and they'd kneel before the master backers of the, of the, of the group and they would have their burden for the day put on them. They'd put a pack on them, they'd strap what they're carrying, that burden for the day. And they would get up and begin their travel. And after a few hours of travel, the caravan would stop. And the camels were lined up once again, and they would come and kneel before the master. And they'd have their packs adjusted. Because as they walked, they began those first few hours of their walk, they began moving under their load, and the load would, would loosen. The ropes would loosen. It would become irritating. And you could hear the camels, oh, oh, you know, I'm not liking this. And when they began to do that, he'd say, OK, let's stop the caravan. Camels come up. They kneel down. And they get their load adjusted. Amen? Amen. Then in the evening, when they got to where they were going, the camels would line up once again. And they would all come before the master of the caravan, and they would kneel before him, and he would take their load off and put it to the side so they could rest. Did anybody hear me this morning? Yeah. Are you hearing this as well? We all probably remember, as I said earlier, the beginning of our Christian walk. I think we remember that. I ask that often. Why do I ask it so often? It's because we need to remember. We need to remember the first time we received Jesus as our Lord and Savior. How did we act? How did we talk? What did we do? I'm sure that we all will remember the morning of our deliverance when we knelt before Christ to take up our cross and follow him. We should remember the day that we did that. Somewhere along the line, we need to come to a place where we no longer accept our burdens from yesterday because we've been packing them every day, all day, 24 7, and again the next. We've had no relief. We've taken no break. But we continue to walk over those burdens. Somehow along the line, some of us have quit coming to the Master for the relief of our burden. And maybe that's you today. We're just under the burden of the day without, without any help at all. In fact, a, another master, a harsh task master of another caravan, 
has come into your life and, and taken you hostage and, and set upon you more weight than, than you ever thought you could bear. You've learned to bear it. You've learned to carry it on your own. The devil slips extra weight in our backpacks, extra burdens. And we carry them over and over and over until we become weary. We, we become sore. And we begin to groan. But we don't stop. We groan and we become unable to travel the route that God has planned for us. But we don't stop. We continue on. We wind up on our knees, all right. But instead of waiting for the Master, instead of waiting for Jesus to help us in what can probably be our own pride, our own stubbornness, our own arrogance, we strain and struggle to our feet saying, I can do this, I can do this. I can handle this, I can do this. And we get lost, we lose track. We lose track of where we were going. We lose track of the caravan. We lose track of the church. Where's, where's my church going? I, I, don't, I didn't know they were doing this. I didn't know they were doing that. I didn't know where they were going. And we get lost. We find ourselves with a with a burden that we cannot remove. It cannot, we cannot come out from under it without the help of Jesus Christ, without the help of the Master. We cannot come out from under it. We become tired, we become thirsty, we become weak. We become a pathetic picture of what a Christian should be. I'm saying if that's true for you today, if that's true for you today, there is only one solution. And his name is Jesus Christ. He is your master. And he is not a hard task master. Amen? Amen. Amen. We've got to learn to do what them stupid camels do. <laughs> Come and kneel before God. Come and kneel before the Master. Have your load adjusted. Have it removed from you. There's only one way. There's only one result. We've got to come to the place sometime or another when we finally realize it. We finally admit it. We finally understand it. I mean, my goodness, if a camel knows enough to groan and go to the Master, then can't we? Can't we? It doesn't matter if it's a load of grief, a load of trouble, a, a load of debt that you've accumulated. It doesn't matter if it's somebody else's burden that you've taken upon yourself. You've got to get out from under it. When you come and kneel before Him, Jesus is there to adjust the load. To get you back up on your feet. He's there to help you. To remove the burdens that you carry and the burdens that were placed there by the enemy to drag you down. We carry our burdens so righteously, so self-righteously. We even talk about them. Oh, it's so hard. I'm so tired. I can't do this anymore. Why do we do that? I venture to say that we do that because we've never gone back to the Master and said, Hey, groan, groan. I'm not griping here, but i got issues. <laughs> He'll do all of that while we simply kneel in His presence. That's all you got to do. It doesn't take, you don't have to work up a sweat. You don't have to work up this this pounding, earth-shaking prayer, you just need to come and kneel before the Master. That's it. 
Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and all what? I will give you rest. He said, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I'm gentle. I'm lowly in heart. Come before me and you'll find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. And we look at Jesus. My goodness, he was carrying the weight of the world on his shoulders. Or was he? Oh. Mm, good question. When was the last time, you ask yourself this question, when was the last time that evening came and you knelt, you knelt before the Master, Jesus Christ? When was the last time you came and knelt before your Master and waited? Shut up and wait. Hmm and waited before Him, and waited for Him to remove the cares and the burdens of the day and lay them aside, and then give you rest. There's people that can't sleep. I can't sleep because everything's going on. You find it here, before the Master, that's where it's at. We sang that song, Wait for an Answer, and, and, and I, I wonder, how many of us wait? How, how many of us know how to wait? You know, one of the greatest revivals this country ever saw was because some men went in the barn, shut the door, and told God they were going to wait there and die unless revival came. They weren't leaving that barn. They said, that's it. We're done. Lock the door. If God doesn't show up, we'll die right here. They had a burden and they had to wait. And guess what? Guess what? God showed up. Woo! Really? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He showed up. Jesus is our example, amen? Then we've got to look to him, okay? One, one of the things we always see in the scriptures was Jesus went away and prayed. Jesus went away and prayed. Jesus went away and had a long time with God. Jesus went away. He waited on God. He was the Son of God, amen? And yet, he was one with the Father, amen? Amen, he's one with the Holy Spirit, amen? Come on, somebody, help me out here. It's amen. He did. He did. And yet he found it necessary to go to a place of solitude and pray. Woo! Jesus began his day in prayer. The Bible says, rising up, rising up, long while before daylight, he went to a solitary place to pray. I don't do that. I don't pretend to tell you I do that. I get up before daylight, it's to go to the bathroom and go back to bed. <laughs> but Jesus prayed before he made his life decisions. Any decision that he had to make, he prayed about it. He talked to God about it. He conversed with God about it. Amen. And then he acted. Amen? Before he continued all night in prayer, the Bible said. He continued all night in prayer before he picked his disciples. Woo! And how many know that was important? You don't want to just walk around and call on the guys you like. Or the guys that you think are likely. You think they're good candidates. None of those guys were good candidates. God cares about you and He cares about me and He cares about every burden that is on your back for the day. Amen. He wants to walk it with you and be there with you and to adjust you on the way. Because uh, we carry burdens that can be light. We pack your issues in our we loads that in, in our lives that can be lifted. 
begins. It's before Christ. It's before Jesus. It's like, Jack, you got to get this through your head. Sometimes we, we i got to get away, and so what do we do? We go to the lake and we ski all day. And then we get home and, oh, man, I'm going to lay down. <laughs> and i got to do this, and i got to do that. I've got to get ready for tomorrow. I said, hey, there's rest. Was there any rest involved in that? That's recreating. That's not resting, that's recreating. Resting quietly before God is resting quietly before God. There is no other. They called Paul. Paul was nicknamed Old Camel Knees. Do you know that? You know why? Because he was on his knees so much that he was calloused beyond measure. That's a powerful statement. You ought to see mine, they're shiny new. <laughs> <laughs> Look like hubcaps. <laughs> Being busy doesn't cut it. That's not a good excuse. The busier Jesus got, the more he prayed. The heavier the load, the more time he spent in prayer. Amen? Yes. Remember when the multitudes came to Jesus to preach? What did he do? He himself often withdrew into the wilderness to pray. He went away and prayed. I know I said it before, the Christian walk is a relationship with God. A relationship with Jesus Christ. A relationship with our Father God. A relationship with the Holy Spirit. It's a relationship. And we can only know Him when we spend time with Him. Therefore, Luke says, we ought always to pray. We ought always to pray. The Bible says pray unceasing. Well, how do I do that? i got things to do. i got people to talk to. How do I do that? It simply means that, that in your mind is that relationship with God. Wherever you go, that communication is going on. That's right. Whatever's happening in your life, you're communicating, you're thinking, your thoughts Amen. are of God. Amen. Even when I'm talking to this person, is there anything you want me to tell Steve? Is there anything I can do here to, to help my brother? What, what is my communion, my union with God? Where is it at? My name. Boy. Again, do we believe in the power of prayer? It's really quiet in here, you me. Do we believe in the power of prayer? Do we believe that Jesus really means it when he says his yoke is easy and his burden is light? Do we believe that? Do our actions show that? Oh, got quiet. When was the last time? When was the last time you knelt in prayer? Humbled yourself and knelt in prayer. Think about that for a moment. When was the last time you put yourself in the humble position on your knees before God? When was the last time? Not just prayed, but humbly knelt before God. Humbly surrendered before God and truly sought his hand in your life. When was the last time you knelt before the master and sought after him to adjust your load or maybe remove it entirely so I can sleep tonight? You know, again, some people can't, they can't sleep, they can't rest, they toss and turn because they haven't released anything. There was a, a, a man, a businessman, he invited a friend of his to dinner and so they got together, drove to his house, and they get out of the car and they're walking up to the house. And, and they walked up to the house, here to the right was a tree. And, and he stopped and he went over and just touched the tree for a moment, put his hand on the bark, 
rested there for just a moment. And then he came back and continued to the front door. He got to the front door and his friend said, Hey, what was that? And he said, what? He said, the tree thing. He said, oh, he said, that's my worry tree. He said, every time I come home, I stop. And I leave all my worries on that tree. And he said, you know what? You know what? When I come out in the morning, they're not there. Yeah. Yeah. There was a time when I was driving driving a truck, I mean, put in a lot of hours. And I found out that I could not come home and walk right in the door. It was not a good idea. <laughs> All week I have been saying what I wanted to say stopping when I wanted to stay, stop, eating what I wanted to eat, when I wanted to eat it, waking up when I wanted to wake up, and now i got to get rid of that because I'm home. <laughs> it ain't about what I want anymore. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And, and Denny, Denny had to learn. It's not... Hi, babe, the furnace. <laughs> when you were gone, the water, the fences, I had to take time to unload, to, to unwind, to release what I had been packing every day, every day of the week. Amen? Yeah. My goodness. When was the last time you did that? Because Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow's got its own stuff, so you better leave today's stuff where it's at, or you're going to have today's stuff on top of tomorrow's stuff. Some of us not only pack yesterday's stuff, we're packing stuff that ain't till next week. <laughs> oh, look at my calendar. We're packing things that, that have never happened. That, that many times don't ever happen. Because my life changes so drastically between here and there. And, and, and yet, I'm sitting here worrying about next week. Gee whiz, Jack, give it a break. <clears throat> give it a break. So don't worry about tomorrow. And this day is done. Come up, brother, I'll have some music here. Because I'm going to ask you something this morning. I'm going to ask you something this morning. I'm going to ask if you want, if you want prayer this morning. And I know why God put this message on my heart. Stemming from my own issues of not releasing what needs to be released. How long has it been since you knelt before me? You know, I grew up in the Catholic Church. What was interesting about that church, there's kneelers everywhere. They even got little personal kneelers up at the altar where you can just come in, leave everybody behind, get right over here on this kneeler, and kneel down and just be alone with God. This altar is here. This is your altar. People don't come to the altar anymore. There, there's things in our lives that they can only be found here. They can only be found on our knees before God. I thought about bringing kneelers in and putting a kneeler on each side, but I figured they'd just get dusty. <laughs> the 
there is a need in the body of Christ today to release, to learn humility, to find out that we've got knees, God put knees on us so that we can kneel. Otherwise, he'd have made our legs like the chicken with the knees going backwards. They can't kneel. <laughs> we're, going, we're going theologically deep now. <laughs> this is your church. This is your church. This is your altar. You can come up here any time you want. If you're in the midst of worship and you need to come before God, this is not, this is a, a special place up here. I'd like to see it used personally. I think probably God does too. Can we hear God? Sometimes when we come to church, we're, we're wearing this, this mask and, and we're laughing and joking and, and inside inside we're dying inside we're a mess and so we we go through praise and worship and then the pastor says something half intelligent and we think we've had enough we can leave and quite often quite honestly we leave in the same condition we came in at least with the same burden that we came in because we didn't release anything I invite you right now if, if you want to pray and I invite you to come up to this altar right now submit yourself to God and deal with some of those issues that are on your mind. it's a time it's a time I know I'm not the sharpest one going when it comes to electricity and wiring, but I'll tell you what, when I flip a switch and something don't happen, the first thing I try to see is, is it plugged in? Is it plugged in? If there's no power, are you plugged in? Will you allow him today to take the burdens that you bear? off of your shoulders. If there's no room at the altar, you can kneel up here. You can kneel right where you're at. You can kneel down wherever you're at. It should be a regular, a regular position for the body of Christ. On their knees. Allow God to release your presence today. Readjust your load. Father, that you would remind us by, by the voice of your Holy Spirit in us, that you would remind us tonight, for golly sakes, 
to come before you and to kneel and have, have the burden lifted from us so we can have a good night's rest. We, we can sleep. We can regenerate our, our body, Lord God, and, and put our mind at rest. Father God, show us that, that we've got a we, we can have a, a, a worry tree, a worry brick, a worry rock, a, a worry car fender, a worry something, Lord. So when we come home at night, burdens of the day do not come in the house with us. There's no place for them there. Father, that we can, any time we want, come to your altar to pray. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that would take place today, Father. Lord, that as we leave, as we walk out those doors, Father, if we're packing something on us that is driving us in the dirt, it is our own fault because your yoke is easy. Your is light. Take my yoke upon you, you said. We can trade in our yoke for yours, Lord God. Family, I, I like nothing more than to send you out of the doors leaping and shouting and, and carry on like a bunch of kids. And that anointing is just outside the door. You can walk in. But I really, I really do think that we need to be thoughtful about where we stand with Jesus Christ. Maybe more importantly, where we kneel. Try to make kneeling before Him something new. If it's something you don't do today, try, try to bring that into your life. Try to come before the Lord kneeling quietly before Him and asking Him to lift. If you're one who, who has disturbed rest, who, who can't sleep, I suggest you try that. I suggest you kneel before God and release those things to Him. Let Him take that load from you, for tomorrow has a load of its own. I ask that you leave here today in the glory, the wonder, Lord Jesus Christ in you. Let the mercies of God be with you. Let the joy of the Lord be rich in your heart. And as you leave, it is a party. 
You can't skip and dance with a load of sand on your back. But man, you can, you can tap dance when it's been removed. So may the Lord Jesus Christ himself bless you. May he honor you with his presence. May the hand of his glory be upon you. May his relief rest with you. And may your remembrance be his tonight. I pray these things for you this morning. And I pray them in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Go forth and multiply, people. Be free in the name of Jesus. Give someone some sugar. Before